Jay here for Stratford Paddock, Manchester United losing away at West Ham. With me is a man that doesn't need an introduction, but I'll give him one anyway, Stephen Alson. Steve, the attention, or a lot of the attention, will be on David De Gea and his mistake. I mean, is that right? Is it? Is he cost us that game or is it more than that? Is it deeper than that? It's interesting how it's categorised as a mistake. It's a failure to save a, a pretty straightforward ball. It's interesting that that's a mistake, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the way that that gets classified. Um, sorry, it's, it's been listed as an error leading to a goal, I believe, by the stats uh, people, um, which I think quite mad, actually. Uh, how? What's the threshold for when I probably should have saved that becomes an error? You know, mm. versus just, you know, I don't know how inaction becomes an error. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I do, I do um, get your point. You can't say he didn't have an, an hand in it, but you can't lump it all on him and have him carried out all the way back to Manchester because, I don't know if you noticed, we didn't score a fucking goal, Jay. And to win a football game, now you could not lose a football game, but to win a football game, it's kind of imperative that you score a fucking goal. If you don't do that, you ain't going to win. No, and this is, I know you love your stats, but here's one that you probably know anyway. Three goals in six games in all competitions including, you know, two hours or whatever it was, two and a half hours against Brighton at Wembley. I mean, it is worrying for me that the fact the goals have dried up. And it was all, me and you were chatting once on the brew about Marcus and we were chatting a few times about how reliant on, we, on him we are. He's got two in his last nine in the Premier League anyway, and no one else is stepping up. I mean, if you're Eric Tanag, what do you do? Because he tried Vegos today and then he brings on Andy Martial. Do you think he's just players needing a rest? Do you think he needs to change the system? I know it's a difficult question, but what do you think the answer is? I think there's a few things um, at play. And it's going to sound mad, this, but I think we can all agree Luke Shaw and Victor Lindelof have been brilliant defenders in this team. And I don't think anyone... In the last few weeks, they've had great games as a partnership, and I think they're an improvement on Maguire. I don't think there's... I don't know what there is. There's probably someone that's going to argue that, but I think most people with a brain aren't going to argue that. I guarantee no. someone will go, well, actually, but for, for most people whose brain sort of sits within in the red, probably not going to argue with that. But I would put it on something else, and this doesn't answer it. It's an opinion. It's not like anything I can prove. Um... And it certainly doesn't take away from the fact that we were poor away from home while we had him. But Martinez, his defence splitting, midfield splitting balls, where we would get from the back to the front a lot quicker. Lindelof and Shaw don't have the same thing in them. Yeah. That sort of incisive, quick, get somebody on the turn and get us going forward. Martinez had that. He started attacks. He put balls into dangerous areas that these two don't really do. And that's not a slight on them, although some people with thin skin will probably assume it is. It's not a slight on them. It's more of a, here's something I think we're lacking. Because defence starts from your attack with the press and attack starts from the defence with how fast you can play out and how quickly you can move the ball forward. And everything plays into everything. You know, the, the midfield can look better and more creative if you can get the ball to them at the right tempo, at the right speed, to the right foot, in the right area, and it allows them to be able to move on and go and do stuff. And I wonder, is not having the incisiveness of Martinez's passing between the lines, the line-breaking passes that he used to play, is that causing us a little bit of an issue? Because I think if you look at this United side, it's very predictable yeah. in terms of how we're going to attack. You know, I thought Marcus looked sharp today. Again, a game of two halves where we we were like, we haven't scored in the first half. And you're like, oh, fucking hell. We've, we've gone so close. We've had so many shots. We'll get them in the second half. And then we just don't. And that's happened like how many times? Like It feels like about a dozen times in the last couple of months where we've actually been worse in the second half after having a very, very promising start in the first half. It feels like that's a, a proper trend of, of events recently. And I don't know the reason behind that. I don't know if that's fatigue. I don't know if it's mentality. You know, it's effective at home, but then like completely ineffective away from home. Don't understand it. 
But I, I think we've become predictable. We're over reliant on uh, on uh, Marcus Rashford. Anthony Martial has not really lit up the world, and on one hand, you can say he's probably still not match fit. There's no luxury for anybody to get match fit at the moment. If you fit, you're playing. The squad is threadbare, and you know we are doing this without our first two choice centre halves. And it's not just what they offer us from a defensive point of view. The midfield that started was great. The attack that started, you know, all right, Vegas probably not going to get you a goal, but he does bring a balance. And in the first half, that was there. Second half, we tried a few things and it didn't fucking come off, did it? But, um, yeah, it's frustrating, I think, because it's going to feel like a bit of a... Because I do think we're getting shagged in the cup final, Jay. I'm going to spend a couple of hundred quid going down to Wembley and staying over just to watch us get fucking pumped. But I'm still going. No, I just I, feel like that's what it's going to be. People go, "That's negative." All right, well, sorry. No, it's what I, I fucking I, I, feel. I'm, I'm struggling to see past that myself, and I'll be with you as well down there, bro. Um, top four then. A few couple of games ago, I think it was after the Villa game. You felt like it was done. Do you still feel like that? If, unless I'm misquoting you, I'm pretty sure that's what you said, and I, I said it myself. To no, be I. I didn't say it was done. I, oh. I think I th- said it was like... Sorry, I'm misquoting you, which I should know about. Quite fucking likely. Right. At that point. Do you still feel it's quite likely or are you concerned that we're going to throw this away and let that lot from down the M62 get it? They've got to win all of their games. Yep. And we need to drop... To be fair, draws would, would fuck us up, to be fair, as well. So it's not like we have to lose every game. Um, yeah. If they win all their games, which is going to put them on like an 11 or 12 game win streak, I think. Some, I think it might be about yeah nine or ten. I think it is, but it's a yeah it's a streak. So that's going to put them on a very hefty streak. Which right, there's no pressure on them at the moment, so that might happen. Um, I think they've got a very tough game against Villa. Um, I think there's still problems in that team. I don't think they're the the, the done article. So I would be surprised if they're able to win all of their games. So I don't think the pressure on us is to get to. Is it 72 points we need to get to to make sure we stay in front of them? Yeah, I think it is. Nine, yeah, nine points from our last four games is guaranteed no matter what. Yeah, I I think that that's achievable. Um, I don't think it's necessarily likely I could see us getting more like six, seven, probably. Which is going to make it possibly squeak bum time, but that's under the assurance that they've won all of their remaining games and and that's what I don't think they're going to do. I don't think they're going to do that. And you look at some, all right, you think they've got Southampton last game of the season, bit of a yeah. tap in. They've got Chelsea, and they'll give you three points if you just ask them nice, I think. I think they've got Chelsea, haven't they? Yeah, we've got Chelsea. I th- we've got Chelsea. I know they've got Leicester, Southampton, you've already mentioned. That's they've got rough. Villa. They've got Leicester, Southampton, and Villa. Leicester There's their three Leicester games. Could cause them problems. Leicester away and Villa at home, and Southampton away. Yeah. Those are the last they three games. They could points in those two. Yeah. I think Southampton's just turn up and collect three points, in all honesty. Um, although it'd be hilarious if they, if they didn't, because uh, Southampton, are, 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 no one's officially down yet, are they? But Southampton, Southampton, but certainly by the last game of the season, they're going to be. To be honest, yeah, the ten got, points they adrift. They got that. We're preparing for the championship stank all over them. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we're going to need the nine points, but I don't think we're getting the nine points either. Um, and it's a shame because it's probably going to be. Limp over the line and finish top four, yeah, and then get our asses handed to us in the FA Cup final, which is going to mean that everyone's got a bit of a frown on what's been a largely positive season. And I think you have to go back to look at everything we've had to contend with. You know the disruption that a World Cup causes, um, yeah, which of course we didn't have on our own. There was one or two other teams had to deal with having a World Cup in the middle of it as well. Um, but we've we've had a World Cup to contend with. We've had the the dramas with Mason Greenwood. We've had uh, the dramas with Cristiano Ronaldo. We've had um, you know Cavani storm off. We've had injuries to our first choice centre backs. We've had injuries to Anthony Martial. We've had a lot of things to contend with. Mad suspensions for uh, Casemiro, and you know there's been a hell of a lot for us to deal with. Whatever the problems with Sancho were uh, mid-seasons where he ends up just getting off. That's a hell of a lot to contend with. And I'm sure there's more than that that he's had to deal with. I mean, Can't actually be in a dick in pre-season. Like, you know, there's, there's been all sorts of things that he's 
he's dealt with really well. And you could argue flawlessly for all of those things. But it's going to, whether or not, I think you need a clear, logical head to look at this and say, Jay, if I'd have told you we're finishing top four, we'll be in cup, two cup finals and we'll win one of them, you'd have gone, okay, oh, what a good season. Yeah. But the the way that it's it peaked February and has, has sort of come off the tracks a little bit. So by the time we get over the line, we're going to be battered and bruised and, and just done with it and, and begging for summer holidays. I think uh, the vibe won't feel as good as what the actual achievement has been. A role of people that are saying, you know, Liverpool shut the bed this season, Chelsea have shut the bed this season. All right, cool. Is he going to say that on City's title, is it? Everybody shut the bed, therefore it's diminished. Not really. You finish where you fucking finish. We had the same shit with Volley, didn't we, when we finished third and second, everyone was being, oh, it's because everyone's been rubbish, but you can't just keep every time United finish in the top four going, it's because everyone else has been rubbish. you got to mm. say, United have done an achievement. Steve, always a pleasure. Uh, where can people find you? Other than The Brew, obviously, the best show um, in the paddock. I don't know, if you follow me out of my house, you probably keep tabs on me every morning. It's weird. I see everyone that does that. I say hello to you sometimes. Other times I just I go round and round about twice and fuck you up a little bit. Um, but yeah. Right. That's been Steve. You heard him. Liverpool going to drop points, but so are we. Squeaky bum time. And then we've got a nice beating in the final to look forward to. And that's with Steven Allison. I'm with Jay Martin. Don't forget to hit like, share, and Jay, subscribe. Jay, Jay, go on, Jay. Look, go on, before I go, go on. fucking gash. Of course but it is, but we'll be there. We've got America to look forward to, and that's going to be toppers. Just all about America. No one cares anyway, right? We won the Bangkok Century Cup. That's all that matters. Pre-season's what matters, yeah? Forget about your Champions League, your Premier League, your FA Cup and all that shit. It's all about the Carabao Anyone and the Bangkok. Winning, the season, yeah. winning before the season starts is what winners do. Exactly. And we're fucking winners. Thanks, Steve. I'm feeling positive. And thanks for watching.